This screencast provides a short lecture that you should view in preparation for the seminar this week. The lecture will briefly cover the topic of research articles. At level one last year, in the Understanding and Reviewing the Evidence module, you may remember we looked at some research papers as part of some group activities in the seminars. In other modules too, during our studies at level one, Whilst doing general study, reading and preparing your assignment, you will also have looked at and read a variety of research papers. This short lecture provides a refresher on the what's, why's and how's of research papers. Research is a concept you should now be familiar with. It is crucial in furthering our understanding of the world around us and through this it helps us understand how to make improvements to our environment. The new evidence that can be revealed from research studies can have important implications for academic and professional communities. It can influence professional practice and provide rationale for changing practice for the purposes of improvement. This is a facet of evidence-based practice. So, looking at the evidence, carefully considering it, and then making sometimes small, sometimes considerable changes to the way we do things based on what new research is showing us. The results of research in the health and medical professions can help us develop more effective medicines, offer better healthcare interventions, gain a better understanding of how things work and deliver better services. For occupational therapists, we can use research to gain a better understanding of what works and what doesn't and how we can improve the effectiveness of the interventions we offer. We can also, and very importantly, use research to better understand the world from the perspective of service users to whom we provide occupational therapy services. Research is conducted in all subject disciplines and disseminated via a number of different approaches. We tell the world about our research through public speaking, for instance, at conferences and public lectures, and by writing about it and publishing an appropriate information source. This can be in the form of a full written conference paper published in the proceedings from the conference. This is essentially a document that contains abstracts and full written papers of all research presented during the conference. Research can also be disseminated in written form via an official report. This might, for instance, be a service evaluation or official report on some research carried out or funded by an institution, for instance, a charitable organisation or a professional body. And research is also commonly reported in written format by articles in a peer reviewed journal. So what is a research article? Well, a research article is a formal method of reporting the results of academic or scholarly research. Research articles can report on qualitative studies, for instance, those that report on phenomena, e.g. lived experiences of individuals or groups. And these studies generally analyse spoken or written transcripts and deal with data in the form of text and words. This is a typical example of a qualitative research study title published in a peer reviewed journal. Research papers can also report on quantitative studies, i.e. those that, for instance, examine how effective an intervention or treatment is. This is often done through measurement, for instance, with outcome measures or performance analysis, and deals with data in the form of statistics, so numerical data. And this is a typical example of a quantitative research study title published in a peer-reviewed journal. So how are research papers produced? Research papers are subject to scrutiny through the peer review process. This is in order to ensure that only research of a good standard and quality is published. It would indeed be unethical to put poorly conducted research out into the public domain, particularly as published research can influence professional practice and the delivery of patient care. Clarity in the writing and sufficient detail in the methodology will specifically be considered by the reviewers, alongside other things such as broad consideration of other relevant literature. Peer review is an important process as research papers can take the authors a long time to produce and the process of writing can be intensive. It is important that independent experts who are not close to that research review the work to ensure relevant clarity and detail is provided and to ensure that it is of a publishable standard. Research articles generally follow a specific format and structure in the way that they are presented. This is the IMRAD structure, which essentially stands for Introduction, Methodology, Results and Discussion. Research papers normally begin with an introduction that will outline a background to the project. 
This usually sets in context the study by providing the policy context to the study and a short literature review that tells us what research has already been done in this area or perhaps what research still needs to be done. The introduction will highlight any gaps in the literature which helps to justify and provide rationale for why the research project being presented in the article was necessary. The introduction will usually provide details of what the study aimed to do and the hypothesis or research question the study aimed to answer. The methodology section of a research paper will provide details about how the researchers conducted the study. This is important because it allows the reader to understand how strong and robust the study was and therefore to what extent it can be relied on. Details of the research design and methods will be specifically covered. This will include information about whether the study followed a qualitative, quantitative or perhaps mixed methods approach, how the data was collected, for instance through interviews, focus groups, survey techniques, or perhaps via clinical tests. There will also be details about the sample, i.e. who the participants were in the study, how large the sample was, what the characteristics of the sample were, what the inclusion and exclusion or eligibility criteria were for recruitment to the study, and also how the data were analysed. Ethical issues are usually also included in the method methodology section. The results section of a research article will present the main outcomes of the data collection, so the main findings. If the study is a qualitative one, you may see themed section headings. If the study is a quantitative one, then you may see tables and charts of statistical details. The discussion section is where the researchers will try to make sense of their findings and consider what it all means. Normally, this involves considering how the findings link to existing research, so research that may well have been reviewed earlier in the article and in the introduction section. They will also consider things like how the results inform clinical and professional practice and what implications their study results have for practitioners. There is often a section in the discussion which considers the limitations of the study and where there are aspects of the research that should be accepted with caution. Often, the discussion section will also make recommendations for practice and for future research. So, why do we have research articles? Well, research articles have a number of functions in practice. They contribute to our evidence base and help to give us a better understanding about the world around us. They help us to generate new knowledge and help learn about new and better ways of doing things. It is generally considered to be a little unethical not to share new data with the academic community. If you as a researcher have important new findings from a research study you have conducted, whether they are positive or negative, you have an ethical duty to share those findings so that everyone can benefit from them. After all, you could be saving lives. It is also important for us to be able to see how research has been done so that the professional and academic community can benefit from this. Publishing research means that the academic community can critique it, generate discussion around it, and most importantly, learn from it. Indeed, this critique and discussion around research articles is very important. There are many models and frameworks which allow us to effectively give critique on the fundamental sections of research papers, i.e. the introduction, the methodology, the results and discussion. Healthcare professionals and academics often use these tools to facilitate group discussions about the quality, reliability and relevance of research to their own areas of practice. If the results of research are considered relevant and important enough, healthcare professionals and other practitioners may be persuaded to make small, sometimes large changes to their practice. This is one form of evidence-based practice, practice, and this is how research papers support us in the endeavour of being evidence-based practitioners. As a follow-up to this lecture, this week in the seminars, we will be doing some in-depth critique of a quantitative research paper using a critical appraisal tool. This lecture has explained why engaging with research articles is an important part of practice and we finished by considering why critiquing research papers is a useful aspect of evidence-based practice. Your short task to accompany this lecture is to follow the links you will see on Moodle to the McMaster critical appraisal tools and supporting guidelines for qualitative and quantitative studies. The McMaster guidelines have been developed specifically for OTs to use to critique occupational therapy research articles. Look at these links and, and documents and notice how the format of the forms directs the process of critique to considering the key aspects of a research article that were previously identified in this screencast. So the introduction, methodology, results and discussion. 
You should also look at the links provided to the Compendium of Critical Appraisal Tools and also the CASP Critical Appraisal Tools. The Compendium of Critical Appraisal Tools is a resource that the University of South Australia has created to draw together a reasonably comprehensive list of tools to appraise research papers. You will see that there are a lot available to deal specifically with all sorts of different types of research designs. CASP2 is a collection of critical appraisal resources for different types of research studies. Have a look at one or two and see how they tend to all direct the reader to a specific part of a research article, so the introduction, methodology, results and discussion. This will help you to familiarise yourself with critical appraisal tools in preparation for the seminars this week.